Hello. For this lecture, we're looking at the topic of religions. We're going to be looking at religions and belief systems uh, throughout the world and in ancient times. Before we just start the lecture, I would like to talk about culture, ethnocentrism, and cultural relativism. Now, the definition of culture is a set of abstract values, beliefs, and perceptions of the world shared by members of a society. Culture is learned and passed on through language and social interaction and produces behavior acceptable within their culture. Culture is integrated and constantly changing. Culture is a very difficult concept to try to describe to another person. Culture envelopes us. It basically is who we are. It is how we look at the world. It is our belief system. It's how we interpret other people. Um, perhaps easier to focus on are these two concepts, ethnocentrism and cultural relativism. Ethnocentrism is a belief that one's culture is the best, an attitude based on the idea that one's own group or culture is better than any other. Seeing people outside your culture as the other. Cultural relativism is what anthropologists strive to develop in themselves. Cultural relativism is a belief that cultures can only be judged by their own standards. And you have to work at seeing how people view their own culture and their own belief system. Historically, all cultures have definitions of self and definitions of others. We use different attributes to create these definitions, physical appearance, religious differences, cultural differences, etc. Culture is all encompassing and we may not even be aware that we hold these beliefs. An example of that is slavery. Slavery has been a part of human societies for thousands of years. It is even embedded in all of the monotheistic religious texts as a part of life. Let's start with some definitions. Religion is a system of beliefs, rituals, and practices. It can be defined further as involving a set of symbols, invoking feelings of awe, which are linked to rituals, practice, by a community of believers. Here we have two images that describe early religions. On the left is a Venus figurine. Um, on the right are um, cave paintings. Both of these are part of early um, human religious beliefs. They were polytheistic beliefs. They celebrated fertility, nature, and had many goddesses and gods. But today, Native Americans, as do many other people, still utilize ancestral sacred places, often keeping their practices secret so they will not be disturbed. Um, this is at the Grand Canyon. If you look in the distance, what you see is a set of mountains. These mountains are sacred to over two dozen tribes, and I would say close to 500,000 people utilize these mountains as a central sacred area. The Park Service, who manages the land in these mountains, does not protect these mountains for the benefit of people who utilize it as a religious site. Um, this can be seen, the National Park allowed a ski area to be built on this mountain. They allowed the ski area to be expanded in many different ways. The, this expansion has been protested over and over by the local Native American tribes. Um, what you see here is sort of the integration of culture. 
The United States is the dominant culture. They control this land. And what they were doing is utilizing this area for the benefit of a few against the benefit of a many. And it's a display of power and economics. If we were in New York City and we had a temple or a mosque or a church that had 500,000 members, it is unlikely that that building that houses that religion is considered important to those religious people would be destroyed by our U.S. government. Here is a list of some of the functions of religion. Ask yourself, does your religion do this for you? Um, in other religions that you're familiar with, do you see these functions as well? So the first one is explanation. Second, control. Third is legitimization. Fourth is enhancing the learning of traditions. And fifth is community or maintain social cohesion. All religions have some of these functions. Most religions have most of them, but they can have them at varying degrees. There are many different ways to describe or classify religions. I'm going to attempt this simple one. Um, and I have three different classifications here. One is monotheism. The second is polytheism. And the third is non-theistic. OK, monotheism is a belief in one deity. And I have a question mark there because I think it is often difficult to count deities in a religion. Um, for instance, many monotheistic religions do just have one deity, but they have prophets, and those prophets may have different importance. Um, another example of monotheism with multiple deities might be Christianity. They have what is called the Holy Trinity. And other monotheistic religions accuse them of being polytheistic. If you talk to Christian people, they will say, no, it is just one, dif one deity, but several expressions of that one deity. So again, it can be difficult to count. Polytheism is the belief in two or more deities. And again, it is difficult to count. Many polytheistic religions have stories about a monotheistic deity that split itself into many parts, um, many different deities. So are those deities each different, or are they still part of uh, a one deity or monotheistic religion? The final one is non-theistic. And these are religions that do not depend on a belief in a deity. And oftentimes, when you talk to people from non-theistic religions, you do get the feeling that there is a deity, that, but that they are living inside of the deity as part of the deity. Again, um, these all of these religions have a lot of diversity and a lot of diversity in beliefs. This is just a simple classification system that will help us explore this topic of religion. This is just to give you an example of why it, why it is difficult to count deities. This is an artistic expression from the Hindu religion. And if you look at the central character and look at um, this individual's face, what you'll see is that all of the people surrounding this individual are, in fact, this deity. This deity has split themselves into many other deities who can then split themselves into many other deities. So what do you have here? One deity or many deities? Polytheistic religions often have no conversion rituals. You are born into the religion. You cannot join it. Um, and the gods and goddesses are only interested in a certain people. When I worked with the Navajo, my father became ill, and I had a Navajo herbalist make up a medicine for him. 
her concern when she gave me the medicine was that while she was preparing the medicine, she had given prayers to the Navajo gods and that empowered this medicine to be better. But when my father took the medicine, because my father was white, non-Navajo, the Navajo gods would not see him and possibly they would not empower the plants to heal them. So not only would the gods and goddesses not see my father, but the ritual that created the medicine might not work. Polytheistic gods and goddesses are best approached by professional priests or shamans. They know the correct offerings and assume all of the risks. So if you need their help, hire a professional. Okay, monotheistic religions, and there's a few attributes of monotheistic religion I would like to talk about. First of all, it's a belief in one God or deity, a God that created the world. Um, monotheistic religions all believe they are the one true religions and often have rituals conver for converting other people. Monotheistic religions, oftentimes conversion is a main goal of the practices of these religions. If you believe your religion is the one true religion, what that means is that you believe other people have a false religion. Um, monotheistic religions have great diversity within the different religions represented by many sects and denominations. These religions are huge, often numbering over a billion followers. Um, there's huge diversity within these groups. The non-theistic religion called Taoism has no deity, or one could say the deity is an all-encompassing divinity that is reality. The goal is to live in harmony with the universe. For this last section, I would like to talk about the expansion of monotheism. Over the last 1,000 years, monotheism religions have grown significantly. Um, during the last 500 years, monotheism has spread through colonialism and trade to cover much of the world. This has led to a reduction in native local religions. But in many instances, people who were incorporated into monotheistic religions or into colonial governments, what they did is they took their beliefs and they put them inside of monotheistic religions, contributing to the diversity of these religions. Let's look at a few examples. One of the tribes of the American Southwest in New Mexico is called the Zuni. Now the Zuni were conquered by the Spanish about 500 years ago and the Spanish introduced Catholicism to the Zuni. There were many aspects of the Catholic religion that the Zuni admired. Um, but what they did is they managed to successfully incorporate their religion into Catholicism. Now on the right here, you'll see an old Spanish church. It was built on an area that had previously been used by the Zuni for ceremonies. If you go inside the Catholic church, what you will find is paintings of the Zuni gods. Um, there's an example for you on the left. So who are they praying to when they attend the service in the Catholic church? The entire interior is filled with Zuni gods and seen from Zunis. And I think this is a good example about how local indigenous religions incorporate their beliefs in some way into a larger monotheistic religion. I put these two images in because I think more than anything, they remind me about the complexity of religion and 
religious beliefs as part of a cultural belief system. When I talk to you about the Spanish colonialization process, the Spanish killed millions of indigenous people. Um, they would march into communities and they would demand that the people immediately convert to Christianity. And if they didn't convert, they were killed or enslaved and killed slowly through slavery. Um, for many communities, what they did is they professed to have a belief in Christianity and Catholicism in order to continue to live, but they took the symbols of their own religion and embedded it inside of Christianity. And so you have to always remember when you view another person's religion from the outside, you must remember that you do not see the religion as they see it. There are symbols and meanings that you do not understand. Um, there is no right or wrong. I use images below as an example of belief. Um, for the indigenous people of Peru, the Madonna and the mountain are the same. It is a way of placing the worship of the mountains into Christianity. Look at the figure of the Madonna. Um, if you go to Peru, what you will see in almost every Catholic church, the Madonna has this dress style, I call it the dress style of Queen Isabella from um, the early 1500s. Um, what indigenous people of Peru see is not the Madonna, but the shape of the Madonna. Her shape is similar to the shape of a mountain. So by praying to the Madonna, by bringing gifts and offerings to the Madonna, they can both practice a form of Christianity, but they also can say prayers to the mountains, which is part of their old religious practice. Okay. Religion is a cultural institution, but it also is formed by culture. Religions are primarily concerned with improving the lives of their followers through the intervention of the deities. They provide comfort, guidance, and relieve anxiety during times of stress. But we also know that many wars have been fought over religion and much violence occurs because of religions. Religions can also support definition of the other and inequality. So again, how do we fix this? 